Welcome to the Pretty Girl Lounge, where you can ask me anything and I'll answer your questions. So if you have any questions, just write them down in the comments and I will get back to you guys soon with this new series. So this is a special request from one of my lovely subscribers. She wanted me to make a video on how I... Because I have a, like, literally a rags to riches story. I used to be homeless and everything. So she wanted to know how do you go about getting your pretty privilege back if you feel like you've lost it. So I'm going to go back as far as 2016, right before I joined the military. Um, so before I joined the military, I had joined this one company called, well, this is the company, I won't name the company, but... So this company, my pretty privilege was crazy. Um, I'm a job hopper. I was dropped. I hopped from job to job, and when I came across this particular job, I was the new person, the new girl, of course. And as pretty girls, you know how it is to be the new girl. Like all, especially when it's a male dominant environment, which it was. And there were also your basic Bettys and unambiguous black women as well as exoticals and i guess you guys can only imagine who i got along with versus who i didn't get along with there and that's a whole other story time but when i was there it was this you know the typical all the guys liked me and was attracted to me but simultaneously all the women were hating on me and talking about me and spreading rumors and all of this crazy stuff it got so bad i had to go to hr about it and hr was just on some like well they can't really do nothing about it i guess until something happens or whatever i don't know they didn't do anything about it so i just was like dealing with it my pr i mean i had a situation where i was friends with these two guys and they ended up getting into a fight with each other over me and they were friends before they met me and all of that happened and then they got into this beef because you know i liked one guy more than the other guy but they both liked me and it was that whole thing and, and to this day i don't think they're even friends to this day anymore and i feel bad about that I, even though i didn't have a part to play in their breaking up i I was just exist existing. I really wasn't even trying to come to. I only liked one other person, and I didn't. We didn't. We, it was. It was a secret. It was. Nobody knew that we were messing around unless he was talking. You know what I'm saying? But you know, eventually, news spread around that we were messing around, and the guy that I was talking to told me that they got in a fight because of that and now when they're not friends no more so my pretty privilege was good and then after this job right i joined the military and the thing about the military it can so first of all going to basic training i don't have i'm not allowed to wear makeup i'm not allowed to have any type of beauty products whatsoever just basic stuff like we could, I don't even think we they had dub. We had like spring Irish spring type of stuff, soaps, basic stuff that I I'm too girly girly for that. So I went at least six three months like this. You know, no makeup, not having the right products for my hair. I'm a black girl, but they only had white girl products at this the one little mini mart that we were allowed to go to during basic training to get hygiene products and things so with that you know my i felt like my pretty privilege was going down because of that because you know i didn't have the right products for my face i use certain products to keep my skin clear and i'm in basic training and it's hot you know we're outside all the time the sun and then we're in the dirt all the time because we have to do certain exercises and you know what I'm saying? Like, over time, it takes a toll on your skin and everything. And so, but I'm naturally pretty because my features and everything. But I felt like I was getting less attractive because of that. That's when I started to notice my privilege, privilege in, at least to me, was going down. It may not have been going down, actually, but 
to me, it was going down because I wasn't doing my normal girly things. I was in uniform all the time. And so, you know, after that, I went to AIT and we still wasn't allowed to wear makeup. So I went basically six months straight without being able to wear makeup. It was a bit more lenient in AIT. Sometimes I did, we had to sneak makeup on. We were only allowed to wear makeup like when we weren't working like on weekends or whatever, when we were allowed to go out. But, and we were allowed to do our hair and everything, but when we was in uniform working, we couldn't do none of that. I was a basic Betty during boot camp and AIT. It was so lame to me because I'm just, I'm a girly girl. I like to, you know, wear makeup and hair extensions and pink and everything girly. So after AIT, six months later, I went from being one of the most attractive girls at a job place to feeling like I was unattractive. Even though when I was in basic training, I remember a guy having a crush on, two people having a crush on me, but it wasn't what I was used to. And then when I went to AIT, I did have a guy, a couple of guys, so, you know, it started to make, because it was more of an insecurity, insecurity thing within me. And maybe I wasn't carrying myself the way I usually would have if I was wearing all of my makeup and stuff, because I, don't, I told y'all in another video that makeup was my security blanket for a long time. You know, if I didn't look how I wanted to look, how my beauty standard says I should look based on my beauty standard, my internalized beauty standard, I don't feel attractive. So after that, you know, I'm st I went, they shipped me to Kansas, you guys, after AIT, six months later. So Kansas is mostly white. <laughs> it's hard to find a black hairstylist. It, I couldn't find a black hairstylist when I first got there. And then not even three months in Kansas did they ship us to overseas in Europe. 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 White people. So they don't know how to do black hair over there. But, you know, I'm dealing with all this. My hair is a mess. I'm, I'm thinking about locking it at this point. I didn't know what to do. You know, I have type 4A, 4B, C hair. I don't know what category I'm in anymore. I just know my hair is coarse. And if I don't keep my relaxer in, it's going to start to show, you know, it's going to get crazy, right? And I was dealing with all that. And then they was going to ship me to Europe. I was like, y'all killing me. I can't. I'm, I was. Meanwhile, I was trying to learn how to do my own braids. I remember before I got shipped to Europe, I did my own braids myself for the first time. And it took me three days to do it. But I did it. It took me three days. And it lasted a good little couple of months. But it started to, while we was in Europe, it started to show new growth. And I had to do something about that. At this point, my new growth was so long, I just started to, I did the big chop while I was overseas. And so, you know, I, that's how I started to feel cute again. Because my hair, I was starting to, I was natural again. So I was able to care for my hair naturally, you know, using some water and I would ship products from home to use because we were allowed to get boxes from home. And my parents and stuff would ship me things for my hair. So I was able to maintain it then. And so I started to feel pretty again. You know what I'm saying? At this point, I'm out of basic training in AIT so I can wear makeup in the military now. So, you know, you know, once we got to Germany, I started to go to the store and get my makeup again. <laughs> and I remember I started with, I started to ship some of, I had my mom ship me some of my favorite hair extensions and everything. So I started to do my thing again. I started to feel like myself again. You know, guys were still always, they were trying to talk to me, but I, I guess I didn't notice the guys that were trying to talk to me when I was in my quote unquote ugly girl phase. Because I was in, it was more of an internalized thing. Not that I was necessarily ugly. Maybe I was carrying myself like I was ugly. And maybe I just wasn't paying attention to the people that were. Because when I think about it, people were trying to talk to me. I just, I guess when I felt like I was fulfilling my internal beauty standard, 
with my makeup and stuff because that was my security blanket. You know, I, uh, I don't know, I just felt prettier and I guess I just noticed the amount of attention. You know how us, when we take our makeup off, we're pretty, but when we do our makeup, we are bad. <laughs> so I give that, right? So I went from pretty to bad. Like, she's good looking to she's a 10. Like, I can stun on them hard, y'all. So, I think that's another part of it. I just stun on them twice as hard. So, I got even more attention. I felt like maybe either it was that or it was all in my head that I was always getting the attention. I just didn't notice it yet. So, I was dealing with a lot of insecurities. So, and so I'm feeling pretty again. I'm back to myself. I leave Kansas. I go back home. I mean, I leave Europe and go back to Kansas. And, you know, I'm feeling pretty all over again. I got myself back for a couple of years. I'm trying to go down the timeline. After Kansas, I go back home to Virginia because I'm out the army at this point. So you guys, meanwhile, during this entire time that I was in the army, I forgot to mention one significant point that the entire time I was married to a guy who was incarcerated. I was what you call a prison wife for three years. And the reason why I went to the military in the first place is because he got arrested and we lost our home. And that's where the homeless part comes in. And that's why I joined the army in the first place. So, and all this was even before I started working at that one job where I caused all that chaos. When my husband was still locked up at that time too. And yeah, so there's that whole thing. So I went from being homeless to working at that job. So joining the military and the military got me straight. So I'm gonna get out. Fast forward back to where we are. Um, around this time, I'm trying to get back on my feet, trying to find a civilian job. And around this time, my husband comes back home from jail and he hasn't changed one bit. So I filed for a divorce and I left him. A Couple of months after that, I meet another guy, the guy that I'm currently with. And me and him, you know, He's good in as far as creating a future for his family and, you know, himself. So he had a vision and he also has family out in California and he wanted to move to California before we met. So when we met, he was telling me that he plans on moving to California soon. And I'm like, I've always wanted to move to California too. So we plan together to move to Cali and that's what we did. We drove out here, took a couple of days. But you guys, this is the part where the home, the second, because I was homeless twice. So when we're moving to from East Coast to West Coast to get to Cali driving, the place that we're supposed to live at, I made the gullible mistake of looking for a place to live on Craigslist, trusting that this site was legit. And it turned out to be a complete scam. So when we got all the way over to Vegas, I called the landlord. I was like, we're almost there. We're almost at the house. Mind you, I didn't know this was a scam. I didn't have the keys yet. So she was supposed to meet me to give me the keys when we got over there. So I was calling her to tell her we need to meet so we can get these keys. We're over here now. No answer. No, nothing. I called her more times. Eventually, I felt like I got blocked. Cause the number was discontinued and it was just getting weird i was like did i get played and then that's when me and him started to freak out i was like we moved all the way over here and got no place to live so we're in vegas homeless so we stay at this hotel i forgot what that hotel the hotel in vegas called the stratosphere or something like that we stayed there for at least a month looking for a legit place to live because we just got played and now we're homeless out here and so during this time period 
you know, this was a period of six months. Me and him would be homeless. And during this time, I can't afford my beauty products once again. I can't afford to get my hair done once again. I can't afford anything that makes me feel pretty once again. I'm using the word feel. So, you know, I'm stressed out. We're stressed out trying to find something. Meanwhile, I'm doing Instacart and Uber Eats every day to maintain us being able to at least stay in a room every night. It was a lot during that time. I didn't even, at this point, my beauty wasn't even on my mind like that. Like, a priority it was about making money and stuff. So I just felt, I was wearing sweatpants and tank tops. And I was just, looked like a straight tomboy, right? You know, I am pretty naturally, but I'm, I don't feel pretty anymore because I'm not doing the things that I would do. Six months later, we found a place and slowly started to get back on our feet again. And when I found another job, a real job, I was able to start buying my stuff again. <laughs> and so, you know, I started to buy my supplements. I take supplements to be pretty. I was doing my research on how to be more attractive, and that's when supplements came in. I got my, you know, color contacts that I like to play. I got my clip-ins, I got my makeup, you know, everything's good again. So I think what I'm trying to get with is, is I only felt like I lost my pretty privilege when I didn't feel like I was meeting my own inter internal beauty standard. Even though I'm naturally pretty and I still get attention when I feel like I'm a basic Betty, quote unquote, basic Betty to me means you're just not you don't have your nails done. You don't have no makeup, no clippings. You just, you, you're, not, you're natural. You're a natural pretty. But, you know me, I like to dress up and things. I like to enhance my beauty. That's when I'm one of those. I'm a Rihanna, Beyonce type of girl. I just like to wear enhancements. And I notice when I am in my internalized beauty standard, my confidence goes up. I walk with my head higher. I'm smiling more. So my aura is sh shining brighter than I guess it would be if I wasn't just cute. So I know it sounds superficial that I don't feel pretty if I'm not dressed pretty, but it that's my truth. Um, and I've been working on that, you know, my insecurities and everything, my body dysmorphia, and I've gotten a lot better. So I'm at a point today, present, where, like right now, I don't have makeup on. I have a bonnet on, but I'm looking in the mirror at myself talking, and I feel pretty as ever. And maybe it's because of the supplements that I'm taking that I apply to my, my routine that's keeping my skin just smooth. And the collagen that I take is keeping my skin nice and fine and smooth and Maybe that has a part to play too, because I couldn't afford my supplements when I was homeless. I couldn't afford, you know, I'm not wearing makeup, but I, it looks like I'm wearing makeup. People, there was this, my neighbor thought I had makeup on or they, I didn't have makeup on. That's how I know I was doing something right. So a lot of it is just in our heads. We know we're attractive. We're just so hard on ourselves. And if we're not meeting our internalized beauty standards, then you know, that's, we're going to feel unpretty, but that doesn't mean it's true. It just means you prefer to look a certain way. You know, if you just learn how to, we just have to learn how to accept how we look naturally. You know, also work on your inner health. Because, you know, if your skin don't look good, you're not going to feel pretty anyway. If you have, you know, acne or things like that. I used to have acne. Now I don't have to deal with it. I drink nothing but water. If you take care of your body, your body will take care of you. You'll look better. You'll look good, healthy. You'll feel good, healthy. Working out, you know, that's going to help you get your body straight. You can feel more confident, more pretty, more sexy when your body's done. Trust me, guys. I have a gut and 
I used to not have a gut, and I'm, I'm telling you, I, I want my no gut body back, so I'm trying to, I'm going to get myself back into shape now. So, I, will, I just I hope I was able to answer your question. My lovely subscriber, um, basically, when I wasn't meeting my own internal beauty standard is when I felt the most unattractive. Doesn't necessarily mean that I wasn't, I just wasn't feeling that way, therefore I wasn't moving that way but until i did what makes me feel pretty that's when my everything my confidence went up my head went up so you know it's about just doing what makes you feel pretty and that's the best answer i could give based off of my experience so let me know if you guys have any more questions this isn't, I'm gonna, I'm not even gonna edit this one. I'm just gonna post it. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for listening.